Okay. Hi, how are you? I'm great, Michelle. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm so glad to see you, Jen. It's uh, been a little bit of time, and um, obviously we've both been going through our different phases during COVID, but um, today I wanted to welcome Jen Cassetta to the call, and she is, has become actually a friend through, we met through Instagram, actually, mm -hmm. but I wanted to welcome her to Opportunity Knox. And as we know, what is Opportunity Knox? But every Friday, we feature a different female entrepreneur who actually walks us through their process on opportunities, how we make them, how we take them, how we create them and evaluate them. And Jen herself has been through many transitions and I've enjoyed working with her and hiring her for um, with our women's group. She worked with our women's groups to do self-defense, but there's so much more to her than just her self-defense side of her, as well as the health coaching side. So I'm gonna have Jen go ahead and take us a little bit through herself, but I'm so grateful that you're here today. Oh, me too. And you just reminded me of a term I just heard, which I thought was hilarious and sums up this whole ride we've been on is a Corona coaster. <laughs> oh my God, that's so true. Yeah. yeah the the highs and lows yeah. of the Corona coaster. Exactly. And just sometimes holding on for dear life. <laughs> Yes, definitely. But I mean, I think one of the things that both of us are really good at is like appreciating the moments that we're in, whether they're, they be good or bad, but also, or just, they just are right. And yeah. then pivoting to something much greater. So um, that's something I've always appreciated about the stories you share with me. Cool. Yeah. I've been through a few different pivots in my life and I think each time they just help um, build resilience, build emotional muscles and mental muscles that just help power me through. Anytime life is throwing me a curveball, um, I can just think back and remember, oh yeah, I've been through something like this before. Um, so I can do this again, you know? And that's what I always try to remind my clients and, and my people is like, you've been through shit before. We'll exactly. get through this. Exactly. Exactly. And taking them back. Yeah, the most powerful self. Exactly. So tell me a little bit about like your background and how you ended up, you know, even in California for that matter. Mm -hmm. But um, I know everybody wants to hear about the She Warrior too. So yeah, sure. Um, I mean, if you go to way back, like why I even started all of this in the beginning was um, we just had the anniversary of September 11th. And really that's where I feel like my story starts as far as building resilience and pivoting. I was work like a year or two out of college and was working as an event planner. My whole like young life, I thought I'd be like working in restaurants and nightclubs. And I always did that on the side. Um, I loved it. I love, I think it's more just about being with people and connecting and serving. Um, so, I mean, I still do that, just not behind a bar. <laughs> yeah. So I showed up to work on September 11, three blocks south of the World Trade Center. And to make a long story short, I was running for my life. I was trapped in a utility closet, um, almost died, you know, felt that frozen paralyzation of fear, which I now teach in my self-defense classes um, for the first time in my life. And it was a really harrowing day and experience. And um, I guess the big, the first big traumatic event in my life. Um, but that day I wound up, you know, again, it's a long story, but getting to the martial arts school that I had started studying at uh, a few months prior. And that day, like when I got there, I was like, oh, I can breathe. I feel safe. This feels good. I can get water and see what's on the TV and know what's going on in the world. So that, that space for me became like a, a metaphor, a refuge, a safe space for me. And like all I wanted to do in those days, weeks, months, and even years following 9-11 was get to that space, get on the mat, do the work, get uncomfortable, and really start to connect my mind, body, and spirit. Because I started to realize that when your body is in that like post-traumatic um, stress you know, disorder, whatever you want to call it or label it. I just knew that I, I only felt good when I was doing martial arts. So um, it really 
started my whole path to martial arts, became a personal trainer after that, wanted to do more, became a health coach. Then later on, I went back to school to get my master's degree in nutrition as well to kind of round out um, all of your the, experiences, the services. Yeah. And that was all in New York. So that was, that all happened over a decade, pretty much in New York. Mm. So, so then how did you get to California? So after that decade, um, I, uh, I mean, the honest truth is I had a terrible breakup in New York, like really bad. I was betrayed and, um, you know, had all those feelings. I'm writing about this in my books and now I'm finally like able to tell the story. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I had a, a, a boyfriend who basically had a baby with someone else and like forgot to tell me. Wow. For <laughs> <laughs> oh, that little thing. <laughs> wow. So, um, any, anyway, obviously that was like a crazy time, but I came to visit a friend in LA and she was like, Oh, it, I'm on my porch. It was like March in New York, you know, like mm. horrible cold winter. Mm. And she's like, I'm on my porch with my dog in the sun. I was like, I'm coming to visit. <laughs> yeah. That sounds good. Where do I sign up? <laughs> exactly. So one thing led to another. I came out, I wound up staying for like six weeks and uh, just started healing and realized that this is, was the place that I just wanted to, to spend the next however long, you know, it's been a decade now and maybe longer. We'll see. But it, again, it, it made me feel good. Like I felt safe and supported and, and healed and yeah. I just like, feel good. <laughs> so, so once you came out to California, like where, where's your, you know, where's your energy? So obviously like you're capitalizing on opportunities, right? You're like, oh, this happened to me. So therefore I'm basically going to transition and mm -hmm. take this opportunity to move to LA, not knowing where it may lead you. So right. oh, I had no idea. And I really yeah. didn't know any people out here or anything. So it was a big leap of faith. So in the last 10 years, then, would you say you've been building your network here then? For sure. Here and all over the world. I mean, when I first got out here, uh, I wound up, you know, I had a few clients, health coaching and training, personal training. And then I wound up actually getting some VIP clients that I traveled around the world with. And that I did that for a year and a half and wound up in like almost all of the continents. In that would be fun. Book. Yeah, it was yeah. amazing. Tell me yeah, about that was, experience. Uh, it was a year and a half on and off. I would go away for like nine or 10 like, days. Uh, back. Don't sound so but, excited. It was the, <laughs> no, it was more of like a, uh, like that was the, so good. <laughs> the times of your life. Yeah. yeah. Like if yeah. you could just bring that back. You know, I wouldn't hate that. I was, you know, traveling on a private jet and making smoothies and staying in the best hotels around the world, um, meeting, like, I met a, a king. I mean, I, you know, I have crazy stories. And it was, um, it was definitely a really, really cool time. Hmm. But it came so, to an end. So how, how did you, so when you, so basically you came out here, you started your business, and how did you suddenly come to be an entrepreneur? Like this was your, well, I mean, entrepreneur, like how would you define that? Just someone that works for themselves because I've been that my whole career, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so that's the thing. So, but when, when you were in event planning in New York though, I'm assuming you were working with somebody or no. Oh, I lost my job on 9-11. So that was like from oh, that because the building Obviously was, like, was no longer there. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, so I, sorry, I didn't, wasn't clear, but going to martial arts school over and over and over, I was like, okay, now, what, now what do I do? So the pivot wound up being, well, I feel so good practicing martial arts. So now I want to give other people those benefits, physically get stronger, mentally feel more confident, spiritually feel, feel more grounded. So I became a personal trainer because that was the first, the quickest way I could make money mm -hmm. while I was still learning martial arts. Exactly. And then years into it, like I said, over a decade, health coach added the health coaching, added private lessons at the dojo, you know, through martial arts. And then later, later on, even started my own self-defense classes. So um, once I moved out to LA, 
I was like, okay, I like, I like the one-on-one, -on -one, but I, how do I expand my reach? Mm -hmm. um, so I would do more and more self-defense classes at different community events, different um, yoga studios, wherever kind of wanted it. Um, and I met a lot of different people. Um, so that was one way to expand my network out here while I didn't know many people. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wound up, I can't even remember how to be honest, but I started consulting for companies like Beachbody, oh, yeah. UFC, and started running test groups for them. So again, meeting all these new people that I was in charge of, um, I was in charge of their results. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's how you um, held them accountable. Yeah. Huh? yeah. That's how you held them accountable. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Big time. I was on it. Um, so would you say then, yeah. these, like transitions that you, um, there was an opportunity that you missed that you look back, like here you were talking about traveling on jet planes and, uh -huh. you know, having this amazing experience of your life. And did something ever come your way that you were like, wow, like, I wish I said yes. I don't think so. I, I feel like I've created so many opportunities for myself and that, you know, I don't remember saying no to anything. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure I said no to a lot of things that just weren't even on my radar, you know, like I wasn't, I was focused on building my career and yeah, like I can't, I can't even remember if someone offered me a job or anything like that. I don't even know what that would look like anymore. <laughs> mm, that's so interesting. So tell me, in being an entrepreneur or someone that works for themselves or someone who creates opportunities for themselves, how is that right now during COVID? Like, how are you seeing opportunities and, you know, where you see not only yourself going, but other people? Sure. Well, that, so that first five years of being out in LA, again, I was like still doing the one-on-one, -on -one, doing some classes. But then the last five years, I've really been focused on speaking events. I found that I loved, uh, so again, to backtrack, I guess the other pivot was I wound up on this reality TV show um, mm -hmm. where that felt like a big kind of failure because- um, What show was that? It was, it was called My Diet is Better Than Yours. It was mm -hmm. on ABC, prime time. And um, long story short, my client, it was a weight loss competition and my client got so mad at me that she quit the show and walked oh off. God, wow, <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. And by the way, not to like stereotype, but I, that's just so interesting. Why would she not instead just accept it? You know, I mean, you sit into it. Yeah. I could go on and on, but I'm not going to because. Because why waste our time? <laughs> right. It didn't work out. I thought it was going to be like this big giant failure. And what wound up actually happening was that I, the last scene they showed was me at the scale with her and kind of hinting that weight loss isn't just a calories in calories out equation. It all starts here. And really it's all, like mostly mindset. So that's what she really needs help with. And I suggested seeing a therapist and that like blew up. Anyway, people watching at home actually really appreciated that I brought a different conversation to the weight loss um, game. Awesome. So. I wound up pivoting and saying, okay, you know what? TV's not happening. <laughs> what I really have always wanted to do is connect with people in real life. And, and um, that's when I started public speaking. So I started at colleges and then moved into corporations and building this whole speaking career only to have coronavirus come and shut down all events this year. Yeah. Um, so that's where we're at and it's okay. Because again, I've been through shit before. I'll get through this again. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, it sounds like too, from what you were saying before we got on the call, it seems mm -hmm. like it's provided an opportunity to focus on other things that you're yeah. wanting to take off your list that yes. makes you focus on, right? And, uh -huh. um, and I think that that's the interesting thing is that, um, you know, so many people want to put this, this year to bed, you know? Sure. And um we have a hundred days starting in October. Wow. And so in which case I feel like this is the time to take the opportunities and 
you know, a time for us to really say like, what is missing? What do I need to step into? So what would you say for you is like some of the things that you want to pivot into if there was only a hundred days left in the year? Absolutely. First thing I just, what came to me right now as you were speaking was in the beginning of all this, right? When everyone was feeling paralyzed and like, oh my God, what's going on? What am I going to do? The one thought that just, I would, I planted in my head that I kept playing over almost on a record was, Jen, what if this works out in your favor? What if you know, this looks like an opportunity for you to create something new, or just like you said, yeah. pivot into something new. Um, and that's what I just want everyone out there to, to like take on. It's like, what if, right, this could actually be the best year or end up as a, as a decent year for you instead of everyone having like this disaster mode um, for 2020, right? I mean, like, why not? So, I was able to write my book proposal, which is something that I've been putting off for years because I was too busy on the road and doing all the things that I was doing to make money. So, so that's been a blessing. Um, I am finally leaning back into my coaching uh, career, which again, it's about connecting with me and supporting women um, to unleash their inner she warrior and find their power and stop up all those holes, those energy leaks that are leaking out of them. So that's, that's my mission in life. So I can do it, you know, this way coaching. Yes. So I'm just going to keep doing what I do. And if we have to pivot in different ways, like zoom and doing IGTVs, then that's what it is for now. And that's great. Yeah. So my question for you is like, um, with the uh, coaching that you're talking about, is it more health related or is it more whole life? I'm going to put it out there and say it is all about power. Okay. Um, I see women all the time giving their power away. Mm. They give it away unknowingly. They don't, because A, probably never created non-negotiables or boundaries and stuff like that for themselves. They or don't even really take the time to think about what they actually want mm -hmm. in this life, right? And I, you know, the older we get, it's like, okay, well, we only have a finite amount of time, whatever that is, and that could be literally like weeks or decades, we have no idea. Um, but again, like, I didn't think about it when I was in my 20s or probably even 30s that the end, there's an end, right? You don't really... But it's like, okay, now that I'm in my you're 40s, it's like, it then. huh? You're not conscious at that time. At that time, you're sort of like letting life happen to you. Yeah. You don't realize you have a active choice. Right. And then, and Michelle, I, you know, I know you and I both experienced losing uh, a parent in the last few years. And, and that was another wake up call. Like, I thought my dad was going to live forever. Mm -hmm. He was like the healthiest, most disciplined man I could ever, I ever met. Mm -hmm. He preached about health and we had no idea that there was a tumor growing inside of him. And he didn't know either because he was so healthy. Yes. Um, so that again, like shifted my perspective of like, okay, well, what do I really want to do? And let's go after it now. So that's what my coaching collective is going to just help women do like if you're feeling stuck let's get you unstuck mm -hmm. let's let's dig up what your desires really are in the past people usually came to me because they wanted to lose weight mm -hmm. and you know between you and I and everyone here watching I don't want to do that anymore I, I will absolutely help someone get healthy and fit and strong if that's their deepest desire um, but if you just want to lose weight just to lose weight and only to put it back on again, like there's something else going on. I think there's deeper things that we can work on where you don't have to get on that roller coaster and that, you know, yo-yo again. It's on the root of the issue. Exactly. Instead of actually, you know, it's just uh, putting a bandaid on the real problem. Right. And so um, I, I can understand that. And I think a lot of women, um, need that support and, um, and need accountability and people right. that they feel that will, you know, surround them in that, in that journey. And, and I think that we know, you know, it's interesting. I was, I was 
looking for a tidbit as you know i do those tidbits every um tuesday, tuesday. but like i was looking through the archives so i wouldn't have to re-record something and then i'm always like oh my god i forgot that i did that subject you know <laughs> so i was on the subject of uh today i i found this one on women supporting women mm. and i think the thing is that we've pivoted off some of the other than politics for the, for that matter other than covid and politics we've pivoted off of some very important topics and yeah. the topic of women supporting women is an area that um cannot be overlooked that we need to continue to readdress it and i think by you having um the groups that you're doing it will help because i think so many women give away their power and um don't understand their worth. And yeah. um, so it is a beautiful way of gathering and, and providing results. So yeah. I think that's amazing. So tell me about like during a time that you feel that there was something that you could have taken an opportunity that you could have, I know we focused on saying yes, but specifically like something came around whether it be a personal thing or a professional thing that you just didn't see the opportunity and what may have been in in front of you you know it's this is like the same type of question before that i couldn't answer it's so hard to think of um that because I don't know. I can't think of things that have come my way that I've wanted that I wouldn't go after. Like, I just, it doesn't. Is that, is that because that's your character? Is that like who you are? Like, were you always that person, even when you were younger? Or is that just not. because like, were you raised that way to believe like, were you born confident? I don't know. Um, but, <laughs> but I know it's something I actively have worked on since my twenties. So I also know my dad was big into self-development. So when I was a kid, I would hear the Tony Robbins tapes in the background, uh, you know, or in the car when we go, huh? Tapes. Yeah, like cassette tapes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, and then in my 20s, I started doing his live events and I, I mean, Landmark, I mean, you name it, I did it. Um, so, so again, I can't think of like, like, I don't have any like, oh, I regret not doing X, Y, Z. I just don't have it because the choices that I've made for my career have been very conscious. There's more like, why didn't I, I do that sooner? Word. I actually think that's the word is conscious. Mm -hmm. You made conscious choices in your career or in your life and you were guiding it in conjunction with the universe or whatever it might be that everyone believes okay. out there in the audience. But like, you weren't sitting back unconscious. Plus, okay, I mean, honestly, like I'm, I've always been hungry because I gotta pay my bills. I don't come from a wealthy family. I don't have anyone supporting me. Um, yes, I'm married, but you know, we're, we're both working and yeah. we're both making it happen. So, so I feel like people that are in the position that can sit around and wait for opportunities, good for you, but I don't have <laughs> But it made it made my life very, like I said, purposeful on in on purpose and with intention. Yes. To make things happen. Yeah. So um, because we're coming up on a certain hour that I know that you need to wrap up and I need to wrap up. So what would you say to our audience would be a way of methodically evaluating an opportunity? Mm. Um methodically or I would not, say the first right the first thing that went through my head is gut like what is your gut telling you about it and really get in touch with your gut we live so much so many people live so much in their head and we forget that we're a look at my kitty an organism you know a mind body spirit and uh she's so cute so cute um, I wound up keeping her by the way so <laughs> I'm like, she's so cute. I showed my children and she, they were like, why can't we ever? I'm like, okay, I'm like we have to wait. I'm like, we have a dog still. If I bring in the dog's old, if I bring in a cat, she's going to be like, what? You know, yeah. I'm like, totally. she, she's probably like, we just got rid of that other cat. 
<laughs> in March. And now we got that one. Great. So, um, but yeah, I would say intuition, gut, go inside, get into your body. Don't let just like your head run around in circles and talk you in into it, talk you out of it. Like, what does your body tell you? What is your gut telling you? Um, and, and then go from there. Obviously, people have to take in lots of um, real life scenarios, like their finances and their partners and all this into consideration. But in your gut, if, a, if an opportunity feels so good, um, I say, go for it if you can. Yeah. Well, I love that. I love that kind of guidance because it's giving people permission. And I think that's what happens a lot of times. And I think you touch on something very real about finances. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, that's a motivator for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. it, you in some ways it feels that the older we get as women, you have a lot of different um, layers and types, right? As always, but like, there's the people that like, well, it's a luxury. I don't really need to do anything, you know? Sure. But what if we pushed ourselves to do something? Like how much more could women grow or build or whatever it might be? So anyways, I wanna thank you for your time. And I am so grateful for this opportunity that you are, uh, taking time out of your schedule to interview. And if there's anything that you want to leave the group with, please feel free to say it now. Where can they reach you? And um, anything more? Absolutely. I'm, I'll be tagged here at Jen Cassetta. Um, if you, oh, I have a free confidence course, a five-day confidence course. If anyone wants to dig in, um, just go to jennifercassetta.com and you'll see a pop-up happen right there in front of you and you can just enter your deets and uh, you'll get some good good tools for your tool belt to walk you through this pandemic and life going forward um, being able to tap into your confidence whenever you need so important so important all right well have a great day i'm gonna go ahead and start stop our recording great